Hello everyone, it is a great honor to present at DevCoin. Welcome to our presentation. Don't dare to exploit an attack service tool of Stripe Server. It is presented by myself, Yu Hao Wen of Singapore, Steven Sealy of QHU 360, and Zhen Liangpeng of Singapore. Let me introduce ourselves at first. Yu Hao Wen, who is a web security researcher of Singapore and also a CTF player of Team K POC. Steven Sealy is a security research of QHU 360, and he is a very good trainer. Zhen Liangpeng is the principal security research of Singapore. Let's begin. The agenda we will be talking about is introduction to Shepherd Server, exploiting server side, exploiting client side, and examples, and a conclusion. Shepherd Server really doesn't need an introduction as a part of Office 365 products. It is one of the most popular trusted content management systems that we have today. It has online version hosted by Microsoft Azure and on-prem version which we can deploy ourselves. It doesn't need too much professional knowledge and skill to deploy, but actually, in my opinion, it should have a more higher learning curve than other content management systems. You always need to spend some time to get similar value, but many schools and institutions like it in fact. This is an example of what Shepherd Server would look like in 2019. This is a default communication site. It looks pretty modern, out of date, and pretty professional. But hidden behind all that is a lot of features that don't necessarily have buttons or area to reach. We are going to explore a lot of that in this present day. With an introduction to Shepherd Server, we can talk about the structure the key difference, design weakness, and edit customized page default danger. With the shepherd structures, it's a site admin who can manage different sites and they can assess the admin panel which has global configuration settings that can impart multiple sites. Or you can deploy a new web path, lots of features. So it's really a powerful position. To be honest, we have not fully explore the admin panel but I do believe there is the ability to upload regular files on the server and execute the code anyway. Then this is known as the site owner and this is the regular permissions that are given by most users. So if a new user is created and they have site owner permissions because they can create their own site. If they are just site viewer they can't do anything other than just viewing the page. They can't change any settings. And what is my site? So think of it as like my space or something. They can create their own page and they can put content on there and do what they like. But they cannot use their site to access other sites. They are in a restricted sandbox. The key difference with SharePoint and some popular open source competitor would be this. As I said before, this ability to create a site. In the SharePoint eyes, site is a new structure. It has a new physical folder on the file systems, then a new virtual directory is created and point to that folder on the file systems. It's run on a different port, it's different application pools, but some site will not create a new folder, just a virtual one. And they can upload page in that site, like JavaScript file, those JavaScript cannot access other side content, which is why Microsoft demo is safe to be able to upload JavaScript code on your side, because it means that JavaScript cannot access content on another side of admin side, where lots of dangerous things can be done. Users can upload custom page like a conversation, and there are several different authentication measures like NTLM, phone-based authentication, and so on. The design weakness of SharePoint is the ability to use an arbitrary file rate vulnerability that can be leveraged to achieve remote code execution. Because it's possible to read the web configure file, which can contain the validation kit or build state serialization, 
which can be used to generate a particular build state, executes an arbitrary command against the application. Now, I know some other researchers have talked about this before. And this is something that chosen as a default design of SharePoint. I'm not exactly sure why they have. Besides that it's generating use a randomized fixed kit in the web configure. Because it's possible to generate a random kit without using fixed one. Like the patch of CB202068, but I'm not sure exactly why SharePoint doesn't use that particular feature. I believe that there are some a code in SharePoint that require the validation kit to be stored in the web chemical file. I'm not very sure. But regardless, if a file disclosure vulnerability is found in SharePoint, it means that you have an arbitrary command execution. The edit customized page default danger. The permission rather is allowing user with this privilege of site owner rather to upload page on their site. So this also work on server online as well as server on purpose, but it should be enabled by admin in server online. It gets dangerous because users can upload also SPS page, can contain client side script along with server side SP.NET controls. Those are known as side page. The controls are filtered by an allow list that is defined in the web config so you can just upload whatever control you want. And those controls will be deserialized using SAAL. That several evil payloads used in the past with SAAL related the load, but those payloads don't work here. We can't just deserialize whatever payload we want and get code execution in that way. Users can also not upload in light sp.net script. It will not work because Compilation is never. You cannot run the compiler code on the server. Additionally, the ASP.NET server side encode are also broke. However, a combination of the allowed server side control and JavaScript can be quick problematic. And we will talk about several vulnerabilities that are raised by this. Looking at the table, side page which are created by users. The content of those pages are stored in a database, they are not compiled, and they are untrusted. And so application page is an uh, opposite. They are created by the system or installation. They are on the file systems. They are compiled and they are trusted. Those files will get compiled and executed when accessed. Now, for the server side, we are going to briefly discuss the attack surface. So using things like bypass SP page parents field check, server side request for really SAL packaging and will give you some exploitation examples. Bypass SP page parents field check. SP page parents field override the page parents field. It doesn't check files in file systems and render them directly but check files in database if they contain only safe controls and without server-side encoder. In addition, this page is copied from learn for escape We want to know what a safe control is actually made out of. The root class is system.web.ui.controlled class, and so every sp.net control is stand from it. And to work out what classes can be used for SAL deserializations, the controls that are marked as safe in web config file. So here is an example. There's two different controls. The first one is actually a namespace, system.web.ui namespace, and all types under that namespace are safe. Then you have another that has the system.web.ui.web controls namespace, a particular type cycle data source that is marked as false, it is not safe. By the way, if it is inside safe control tag and don't special safe or not, it is safe. Let's see if a control is stand from an unsafe control, is it safe? Yes, actually. 
examples, if we look into the web config file and we see the cycle data source, it is defined as an unsafe controlled. But as it turned out, there is a particular class called SP cycle data source that is tanned from cycle data source. This particular control is not blocked from the web config. It was possible to raise a cycle connection to open sync. Attacker can control the connection string properties and it can be used to attack the client drivers on the server itself. We saw that this earlier research is interesting because not many people sat down and looked at into attacking cycle drivers uh, on client side. But overall, my cycle driver is interesting. If you can connect to a malicious MySQL server, then the local server can send back a request for a local file. This has been public node since April 2nd, 2006. I do know that this is by desired feature of MySQL if you control the connection string. In most applications, the connection string is not controlled but not SharePoint. Here is an example of a payload. You can see here that the connection string driver equals my cycle. Then the server to the attack server's pod and database name, username and password. But we need specifically here you can see a select command, select stuff from users. We need a select command to be able to trigger the communication or it can communicate with the server. And then on the server side, we will ask for the particular file, you know, web.config. We have a proof of concern video here. Note that it need a MySQL driver in the target servers. And the SP cycle data source file disclosure bug had a pass bypass. It was interesting because this particular bypass was a tunnel of track tunnel of use in the way that that they track the connection string. To be honest, we never tested this pass bypass. We just reveal the pass quickly and think it was vulnerable. They added a track of the connection string and this was the method called track connection string. It will get the connection string and call its allowed ODBC driver. Let's check it. The first thing it look out is a DSN in the connection string. Then it will look out the DSN and find the particular driver out of the DSN. And if that equal to cycle server driver, that's the trusted cycle server then it will be allowed. But if you look at the implementation of the extra connection to open, it look for either a DSN or driver property, whichever is set first it used. We can exploit this for a time or check time or use by providing a DSN property after the driver. The in part again is RCE. But we Need, need to know the uh, existing DSN on the target systems that use cycle servers. At the time, we didn't spend too much time on these particular vulnerabilities, but we think that there is a way to leak the DSN. Here is our POC. You can see that we're using PowerShell command 
at ODBC DSN, which will create a DSN on the systems using cycle servers. When we actually payload itself, here contains DSN equal POC as long as the DSN is in here, then it will be treated as trusted. But then when the cycle connection is made, it said the driver property first and then said it's in my cycle, it's in my cycle driver, then what other properties and then it ignore the DSN because that there is not a particular property for that particular driver is a cycle server. And if you find a server port database and then trigger it again. So we can continue to read the web config file and get remote code executions. Then look at the next example, CB2021-28450. It is an IED DOS bug and come from another unsafe control. We find this control and regular expression validated. It looks like that link to regex validation. There is a sound class input from the regular expression validator extend from it, which is safe. Okay, let's check this normal example. As we see, we can control the validation expressions and validator value. Anything else? When we read the code and we follow that, we can control the time out too. So in this case, we can specify the expressions and the input, as well as the mass, mass time out for the expressions to be calculated. What will happen if we insert a malicious expressions? Think about these expressions and our input is 128 and exclamation mark. It will run very very slow because the first part of these expressions will be excused repeatedly. It will keep matching it will keep matching and until run out of time. Here is the thread about how many steps will be excused when the number of A is increased. We can see that when we input twenty A it will run more than 100,000 steps to try to match and we will attack it with 128 A and we will we can set a large timeout value so these threads don't get closed quickly. So we tested it against Shepard online and make it died after sending 50 requests. You don't need to send requests at the same time. Just send it slowly and save the result, and it will restart after some minutes, um, maybe 20 minutes or more or less. Then go to the next example that we will talk about. We found two types that were blocked in web.config file. This was about creating users with the and trend password, and in this time, we can't find any class extend from them. It is fine, we ask ourselves, why are those controls a bug? Why are those particular controls? After doing a bit of research and uh, investigation, we found that those people controls can reach a uh, open file mentioned in the root control class. The change password and create user ways extend from web controls which has an open file versions. Of course, there was an additional controlled password recovery which was not blocked in the web.config. We could use password recovery control to email ourselves our own password coupled with a file of our choice. We think it is designed to select an email template file so email address will assign to account using the phone based authentication which was the default authentication for SharePoint Online. They will allow us to email ourselves with the web config file and get RC again. But the attacker also need to leak the membership provider and we can follow it by the session cookie. Uh, and Outgoing SNTB server need to be configured on the target system as well. 
so that we can receive an uh, email of web, web dot configure file. This is what the payload would look like. All we have to do is specify the body file name that equals a particular part to web dot config. We load a quick proof of consent for that one and put it here. Email result here, we can receive machine key in our mailbox. Here we use verb to capture it. Then let's put out self control and we will talk a little bit about server side input. Server side input are directives that place in HTML page and evaluating on the server while the page are being served. In SP.NET, it is convenient to include web.config to steal machine key, but it is blocked by default, or most case at least. When you were to make an SPS page on the server, you will try to do it include for web.config. It is not allowed because SP page parents filter is enabled by default and it blocks the include. It's a side page and doesn't allow it. But as it turned out, there was a way to bypass some of this. Let's see this example. Here is a famous method named Paris Control, which was introduced in Loop for Escape presentation and used in many bars with the SharePoint. It will Paris strings to control the class, and it has the ability to bypass the SP page Paris filter. If the second parameter to the pass control is too true, the SP page Paris filter will be ignored. By ignoring that, we could get an encode going. So we want to find a method which will call Paris control with a dynamic flag. The data form will be part controlled. It has a particular method called create child control, and it is called when the other control exists on that particular control, and inside this function, it called Paris control. It is a good target if we can make the flag true. And the flag generated from verify SPD control maker. We have to satisfy some validation to reach this code in a dangerous way. It has to be valid. Okay, first of all, it needs to be a valid SNL so we can so we can restrict a profess because it is not a valuable SNL format. We also need to have run an equal server or it would be sold as client script and would pass the verified control. It also need to be a safe control. It can contain things like object data source control, which is a famous gadget. We create a payload that will use server-side input instead, as you can see. It uses phone with a run an equal server tag. Don't need to use any unsafe control or object data source. And then we include the web config file of that particular site. And then it will leak the validation kit and give us remote code execution back. As we have got a video demonstration here. Let's continue this presentation. Next, we will discuss another type of attack, server-side request forgery. Let's look at the vulnerable code example. The server will retrieve the URL we controlled and 
and park the URL into a request object, send the request and return the response. We can set the URL to arbitrary address like web collaborator, localhost, file server, or other interesting HTTP servers. We found many SSI vulnerabilities in SharePoint. One of them will be discussed later. We found a very simple function called OLS. It passed the parameter URL of dimension to save create to get a request object and return the result of the request. It looks very similar to the vulnerability example mentioned earlier. And here, it can be considered as a wrapper of web request.quit. If we can control these parameters, here is a classical SSI vulnerability. At first, we need to judge whether we can assess these measures. Through the research of official documents and online materials, we found out that when a measure is marked as client callable measure, it means that we can call it with HTTP request. The generated format is slash sp slash namespace dot client callable type dot client callable mentioned. So the path here should be slash sp slash sp dot hashtag dot management dot call ls. Note that here is sp not SharePoint. Let's make a change in there. And we can control all the parameters of the client callable method function. So it is very simple to write a proof of concern. Just edit the URL parent for it. Then wait for the server to read our address and return the result of URL request. Actually, there are more things about the server side request for Glory, but for some reason, we can't talk it this time. So the next thing we will talk is SNL parsing. SNL is a very popular make out language. First standard in the late 1990s and adopted by Kotlin software project. It is used for configuration files, document format, image format, and network protocol. And it is so popular that any problem about it has will bring catastrophic results. In the process of parsing external entity, the SNL parser can create various network protocols and services like DNS, FTP, HTTP, SMB, and so on. According to the protocol specified in the URL, External entities are very useful for quite dynamic reference in documents so that any changes made to the reference results are automatic updated in the document. According to official documents for lower versions of the .NET network, when reading SNL test container external entities External entities will be automatic parallels. However, when dealing with external entities, many attacks can be launched against the application. Those attacks include the disclosures of local system files, which may contain sensitive data such as password and private user data, or the use of network access features of various programs to manipulate internet applications. By combining those attacks with other implement files, the scope of this attacks can be extended to server interruption and even arbitrary code execution. Depending on the context of those attacks, we call this attack type SNL external entity attack. We also share a simple vulnerability code example. The code sniff show the classical SNL document dot load SNL method. It will 
receive an SNL content and pass it to SNL document object. The DTD definition will be excused when parallelizing. There are also many ways to parallelize SNL, like SPAS document, dataset dot read SNL, and so on. In order to decrypt the huge problem caused by SSE, Microsoft recommends that users use SNL reader to read SNL text before loading and prohibit the parallelizing of external entity. Or upgrade to a higher version of .NET framework, which will not parallelize external entity by default. But when we check SharePoint, we follow that the .NET version of SharePoint is 4.0 in SharePoint 2019, which means that we, we are likely to find SSE vulnerability in it. Here is our finding of SSE. The traditional vulnerabilities patterns can often bring surprise without a mention get public in content, which will call SNL document dot load SNL. Like our examples, it will read the content in the public in file and parse it as SNL content. Okay, let's take a quick look at the call stack, which appears to be accessible. We need to analyze the measures. First, it will traverse all files in the slash catalog slash WP directory. We need to clarify the files here includes all files in database and file systems because it is SP file which is a wrapper of the file object by SharePoint. Then looking for the file with the send file name as the parameter we set. Read its content and pass it into load SNL. Including the visual file in the database is a good news. Users have enough permissions to upload such files on their website. If it can only read the files in the file systems, we are not be able to do anything. So therefore, the first step in exploiting the vulnerability is to upload a SSE file. We assure it is SSE.webpa, which contains SSE payload. Note that the file need to end with .webpa. But how to make the server load this file? Let's go back to the call state and take a closer look at the function in the light box. We notice that he has a special aptitude client callable. What does it represent here? It is sim similar to client callable mentioned we mentioned earlier, but it is not the same. It means that we can call it with client side SharePoint Object Model API. CSON standard for SharePoint Client Object Model and is used to instead update, delete, and retrieve data in SharePoint. Microsoft provides various client object models like JavaScript models, SharePoint REST API, SharePoint.NET Client Object Models. Then we want to use the last one, SharePoint.NET client object model. When we use debug tools to debug it, we follow that every client callable function has a paired remote function. The calling process starts from the client code, passes through the remote mention of the send name, and then send the data to the server so SNL format. The server parrots the SNL and find the policy mention of the corresponding mention through the invoke status mentions. And finally, follow to the client callable mention to complete the mention call. Now we can start writing the second part of the exploiting. Include the relate dial of CSON, and we need to pass the server URL and the user's credential to gain a client context, then use the context to load the plugin file that we created before, 
and here we set it to SSE. Finally, we should call execute query to package all the data and send the request, which can trigger get public mentioned as we want it. After testing, this vulnerability can also work in server online. An example of reading window in in server online, and our demo of proof of concern is here. But if you notice that we call it SSE instead of remote code execution, because it is still 1% threat away from remote code execution, we found that there is a percent character in web.config. According to the same test of the external entity, it will be considered as an entity definition, but there is no specific name defined later. This will cause parsing error and unable to read the content of web.config normally. If someone can bypass this shortcoming for complete remote code execution explanation, please share your tips with us. Anyway, it is a still um, interesting bug because it appears in SharePoint client code. Then we have discussed the security issues of the server side. They are often really powerful and don't need any user interaction. Next, we will assume that we have a user interaction. A big turn will open the URL you send in the server server. How to achieve an account takeover attack? SharePoint has a variety of user authentication measures including NTLM, FVA, OAuth, and so on. So let's check the FVA, form based authentication. Here is the login form, and FVA is a form based identity authentication. After the authentication is passed, the SharePoint server will set it to cookie it for users, RTFA, and feed OAuth. If we obtain the cookie of other users, we can forge user identities, but the cookies have HTTP only spec, so we can use JavaScript code to steal it directly. And users with designed cookies can access both admin panels and site collections if they have enough privilege. However, as we talked before, we don't just own JavaScript. We will introduce a uh, vulnerability that steal cookies so parameter binding. For these vulnerabilities, we need to solve a problem first. In addition to the request header, where does the cookie exist? Can we get it? In Microsoft's documentation, a special value is recorded. IIS server variables. IIS server variables provide information about the server, the connection with the clients, and the current request on the connection. IIS server variables are not designed as environment variables. Here is the value that we need HTTP cookie. Return the cookie string that was included with the request. Okay, we find another place to get cookie but it is a server values. We need to bring it back to the page. When reading some articles, we notice that there is a special syntax called parameter binding. 
and resource can be bound to a parameter valued in the current render SSL style sheet. The parameter binding element include a location attribute that specifies resource type. The syntax for this element is similar to the SP.NET resource binding expression syntax. The location value is impressed as a function. We can use the location attribute to specify the values for contexts like query streets, server values, web part properties, controlled IDs, and so on. So we can look at this process. When we send a request to the POC page, the server will stop our cookie in HTTP cookie, retrieve slow parameter binding and bind it to the data form with part value and finally display it in page. So here is the proof of consent. We render the cookie back to the SSL value. Therefore, we have the ability to bring the cookies to the client side page. Then we can read the page slow JavaScript without restrictions. Use SNL HTTP request to fetch the value of cookie and send it to our servers. And then check the server's request. You can see that all the cookies are sent contains RTFA and the feed OS that you can use to assess the size of big turns. So here is our conclusion of today's presentation. The above are all the vulnerabilities disclosed in our sharing. From the server to the clients, we have studied many interesting tricks of SharePoint and most of the vulnerabilities are based on the permission we have to upload page. We've able to find many vulnerabilities in SharePoint because of the special user right. When you give users more permissions, your system is more dangerous. Users creating contents that can interact with the server-side controls has the potential to cause some trusted violence. It is hard to build a strong enough filter to protect the systems. And Multiple APIs give users different assessments and gives an attacker a large attack surface for discovery tool. So this is the end of our presentation. Thank you for your listening. Feel free to ask any questions.